Yo. What a day, what a day. All right, guys, I am not personally a golfer by any stretch of the imagination, so when I see a golf course, I think of it as a fishing course with golf hazards. I'm at a golf course pond right now. I fished this one before, but it's been a long time since I've been back here. I'm just going to explore it today and try to figure out what's going on, throw some crankbaits, maybe some jigs. Got my bluegill set up to two pound line. I'll start with that, see if I can't catch maybe some bluegill or some ultralight bass, and then we'll switch to either a jig or a crankbait. Try and figure this bite out. We've had a couple warm days in a row in South Texas, and it's it's raised the water temperature a little bit. So what I really would like to do is use like a lipless crankbait or a square bill crankbait to see if those fish are a little more active with that water temperature coming up. Lately, all I've been using for bass is slow moving jigs. Hopefully, we can change that today. Thank you all for watching. Come on, little Bluegill. There we go. Whoa! My gosh. I have no idea. Two pound line though, it's just a little bass I think. Wait, whoa, it's, it's not a tiny bass. I'm gonna tighten up on him a little bit. I've been trying to catch bluegill out here, but you know what? We'll just settle for a nice bass on light line. Not bad, eh? Yeah. Is that all it's in here? Uh, a lot of bluegill. Bluegill, bass, catfish, tilapia, you name it. All right. We gave the bluegill lure 30 minutes. I think we had maybe one bluegill bite. But all we got was that bass. So we're just going to chase bass. I know it's calm. When it's calm, I normally don't like to use a lipless, but the water temperature is still cold. We're just going to give it a shot. There he is. Wow. First cast, guys. First cast with the lipless. Goodness, that's crazy. Hopefully we can continue that. Yes. Oh, big fish, guys. Big fish. Or at least a bigger fish. Not bad. Get up here. Man, that one choked it. My gosh. Look at that. It's just gone. What I've done is I went all the way and fished this bank over here and only got one little bite. But I come back to this end where I made that first cast and caught that first fish. And uh, that's where I got this bite too. So I think the sun's been hitting this bank all day. And I think I'm going to focus most of my efforts on this bank now.
we go. Yes. Another good one. Score. Biggest one yet by far. Sucks, got him in the gills a little bit. Get him back right away. Oh, I think he'll be all right. Oh, come on, man. There, he came back for it. That was so freaking cool. Y'all saw that rock bounce when he hit it the first time. And I didn't set on him. I just waited to see if my rod would load up. And it didn't. So I kept on pulling and he came back and he got it. Oof. Ooh, nicer fish. That was so cool how that fish came back for it. Come on, get up here. fish are in insanely good shape. Look at how fat that fish is. Man alive, that's crazy. So y'all saw that fish, that rod tip kind of bounced when she hit it and I, I didn't set the hook, I waited. And some things you can do is, is when a fish hits a crankbait rod, wait to see if the rod loads up. If the rod doesn't load up, that fish didn't get it good enough and she'll likely come back for a second strike. So I don't really set the hook right away when that fish hits. I just wait to see if the rod starts to load up, then you lean back into the fish and you sweep those hooks into her. We got 15, 20 minutes before it gets too dark. Let's try and pick off a couple more of them. The setup that I'm using, Speed Demon Pro Rod, Speed Demon Pro Reel. This reel is a 931 gear ratio, which is perfect for lipless crankbaiting because when I pull that bait up and I let it fall, I can gain all my slack back almost instantly. That lets me feel those bites. And that rod, Speed Demon Pro Chatterbait Rod, but works just as good for lipless crankbait. Really soft tip, so it lets those fish really inhale that crankbait before you kind of sweep the rod and sweep those hooks into them. I don't see any golfers for a minute, so I'm gonna explore a little bit. And try and hit this bank more, because this is the bank we've caught almost all of our fish from. Let's fish it down a little more. There he is. Oh man, that fish just destroyed that crankbait. Bigger fish, I think. Oh guys, that's a giant. That's a giant, stay on there. Biggest fish of the day by a long, long shot. No, don't you jump again. That is a giant, guys. Oh, God, come on, dude. That is the one I've been waiting for all stinking day. Don't jump. That's a monster, get up here. She, oh, she's hooked really good. Oh my gosh. Yo, what a day, what a freaking day. Oh, what a We're still rolling, and we got it. That is unbelievable. Wow, that fish just destroyed that. Look at how healthy she is. <laughs> All right, guys, there she is. What an awesome fish. We're gonna get her back. She's ready. She's gone. 
All right, that's the fish I was looking for all day. That is awesome though. It seems that that warm water, or those, those three, four warm days we had in a row really got those fish more active. If I would have done this last week, I don't think I would have gotten those aggressive bites that I got today. So it's awesome that that warm front coming through really made these fish active. You know, I consider this, this fishing trip right here kind of the start of a spring warm up. Those fish are not by any means in pre-spawn mode yet, but it kind of gets the gears moving. It makes, that warm water makes their instincts start to, start to eat more, makes them want to chase more baits, makes them more active. It kind of makes them think about staging for pre-spawn. That was an awesome day. So glad I got that last fish. As always, thank you guys for watching. It means the world to me.